Okay, thank you for reminding me. Uh, so in the last class, I think we discussed about the electric charges and the type of electric charges. Uh, so, uh, so let's talk about the Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law. Uh, so Coulomb's law is, was uh, invented or introduced by a scientist known as Coulomb, uh, who was in France and uh, he, uh, introduced uh, the fact that uh, there lies a force between two charges which are kept at a distance of radius r, I mean a distance r, um, and uh, 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 also uh, this force is, uh, uh, force can be written like uh, f equals uh, k Q1, Q2 over R squared. Uh, and this force has a certain direction and that direction can be determined based on the charges and the type of charge, right? So the Q1, Q2 can be uh, negative or positive charge particles. So based on the particle charge, uh, you can decide the force, right? If both are having the same type of charges, like positive, positive charge, then uh, the force will be uh, uh, away from each other, right? Uh, so if the, if the electric charges are equal in type and magnitude, sorry, equal in type, if both the charges are equal in type, then uh, the force which is acting on the, uh, on the charge is away from uh, the charges, right? Uh, so, uh, if the charges are having opposite uh, opposite types, then uh, the force which is acting on them will be uh, towards each other. So, uh, so uh, the rule in electric charges is that like charges attract um, uh, repel, like charges repel, and uh, unlike charges attract repel, uh, unlike charges, attract. Unlike charges, attract. Okay, so we can uh, also see one thing. Uh, so if there's some charge, right? If there's some charge like uh, minus charge and another negative charge, right? Uh, two negative charges, then uh, the force which is acting on each of these charges will be pointed outward, right? Away from each other, right? This force, which we can call as F, will be equal and opposite, right? And I hope it is clear to you, okay? So the reason for the force to be equal and opposite is uh, because of the Newton's third law of motion. Right, Newton's third law of motion, right? Newton's third law of motion uh, says that um, the once we give some action, uh, an equal and opposite reaction will be caused, right? So uh, when we place two electric charges near to each other, uh, then the force which act on this, these charges will be equal and opposite to each other. Right? And if we have like positive and negative charges kept near uh, to each other, then the force which will be created between these charges will be equal and opposite, right? So the attract, attracting forces will also be equal and op opposite and uh, the magnitude of those forces will be same, right? So the force is governed by uh, the equation uh, which is given by this, I mean, equation uh, based on the Coulomb's law. So that uh, force value will depend on both the charge values, right? The magnitude of the charges. Uh, so 
the magnitude of the charges can be like, for example, one could be two coulomb, another could be one coulomb, right? So nevertheless, it doesn't matter the combination of the two charges and the effect of those two, two charges will result uh, in the force that will be acting on these charges, right? Uh, so the force will be determined based on both the charges that cause it, right? So uh, because of that, the force will be equal and opposite uh, and uh, it will be acting uh, on each of these charges, right? So uh, I hope it is clear to you. So Coulomb's law is uh, defining what is the force that will act on a certain charge due to another charge, right? So this concept is used uh, by us to define the electric field at a certain point in the space. Right? So we will define the electric field concept using the Coulomb's law. Right? So electric field concept can be defined using other laws as well, like uh, Gauss's law. But uh, if we use Coulomb's law, Coulomb's law also can be used to define the electric field at a certain point. Okay, So if you are going to define the electric field, electric field, uh, is defined as the force, force per unit charge, force per unit charge, right? So this unit charge we normally take by standard as a positive unit charge, right? As a positive unit charge, right? So the force which will act on a positive unit charge is known as the electric field in that certain region, right? So uh, the force that uh, that will occur uh, that will be uh, existing at a certain point in the space could be uh, could be actually due to uh, some charges which are in the uh, which are in the uh, which are in the area right uh, so uh, like if like if we do not have these kind of charges the force will be zero as well Right? If we have the presence of charges, we will have some force in here acting in that region. Otherwise, if we do not have these electric charges, then the force in that region will be zero. Right. So uh, basically, if we keep a certain unit charge in a certain region, uh, unit positive charge in a certain region, and we can measure certain force acting on that charge, due to another charge which is available in that area, then we call that that region is having a, an electric field, right? So electric field is caused um, uh, due to electric charges, right? So, uh, so we need to have some source, some source electric charges must be available uh, to create an electric field. Uh, and if we do not have these electric charges, we might not be able to create the electric field. Okay. Uh, so, however, like we will learn in the next classes, we are able to create electric field using magnetic field as well. Okay. So, uh, we can create uh, electric field using a changing magnetic field. So we will learn about that in the next class, next classes. However, once we have some electric charges, uh, like concentrated in some location, uh, due to that uh, electric charges, due to that uh, set of electric charges, an electric field will be generated in the space around that charge. Right. So any point around that charge, if we take and if we can measure certain force acting on that uh, unit or test charge that we apply in the space, then we say that that area is having an electric field. If, we, if there's no force like that, then there's no electric field. If the force is zero, then there's no electric field. Electric field will also be zero if the force acting on that charge is zero. Right, force zero means electric field will be zero. 
Okay, so basically the electric field concept is like that. It is defined as a force that acts on a certain unit charge, unit positive charge, which is, which is kept in a uh, certain point around a, a certain source charge. Uh, so, uh, so uh, I think we uh, discussed up to electric field in the last class. So we will talk about the uh, next uh, sections. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can ask. So if these mathematical concepts are difficult for you, you can ask. I will repeat uh, those concepts, right? Uh, so I will try to do these concepts as like uh, very clearly as possible and slowly as possible. Uh, also, I have uploaded these presentations to LMS. You can refer that also. So in this class, actually, we have a lot of mathematics. Therefore, we cannot avoid that fact that we have to go through the mathematical models uh, and we need to understand these mathematical models. Oh, oh, oh,
okay so we will uh, resume okay uh, so um, uh, like the electric field is basically defined like this however we have other like notations that we can uh, use uh, so um, so we can actually define the, di the direction of the electric field using um, the uh, the r hat vector right so as i said like we can write the like force per unit charge as the electric field and the force we can write using coulomb's law uh, so k q1 uh, test charge if uh, if we are uh, measuring the force on the test charge then the force will be uh, denoted as k q1 q0 over r squared and then we can divide by the test charge q naught and then we can uh, multiply by the r hat right so the electric field can be defined using the coulomb's law and its parameters right uh, so we can define using uh, k q1 r squared and r hat right so th this is just an equation that we can use right uh, so right so uh, this is one another like uh, expansion uh, of the electric field equation and uh, in here we can uh, specifically uh, you find the electric field uh, if we have the uh, values of the charge q1 uh, and the coulomb's constant right so the coulomb's constant is given by k so k value is given can be written and uh, like taken as 4 phi epsilon naught uh, if the uh, if the if the environment that we are considering is the free space okay so the free space environment uh, if we consider we can use epsilon naught if not we need to consider that k is equal to 4 phi uh, epsilon r and epsilon naught right so uh, the k is known as the coulomb's constant so uh, basically uh, if we are using, if we are finding the electric field at a certain point in the space, then we need to uh, substitute this 4 phi epsilon uh, naught value uh, into this equation and find the electric field, right? So epsilon naught value uh, is some kind of a fixed value for a free space. So uh, it will be, I think, uh, 8.854 into 10 to the minus 12. So uh, that value will be actually most of the time given to you. So you need to substitute that. Uh, so if you know the value of the uh, source charge, uh, it could be some value, right? So it could be 5 coulombs, for example. And uh, if we have 0.5, let's say, uh, so 1 coulomb is a very large amount. So if we have a source charge of Point five coulomb, for example, which we are measuring the electric field in the in the value of r. R is the distance between the uh, point where we are measuring the uh, electric field, right? If we are measuring the electric field at this point, then the r value will be the distance from the source charge and up to the uh, electric field measuring point, right? So measuring point it could be here, right? So we are measuring in here the distance between the source charge and the measuring point location is known as the uh, radius r right so uh, based on those known factors we can find the electric field at that point right so the usage of the coulomb's law is that we can find the electric field at a certain point in the space right so uh, so from you from uh, coulomb's law we can find the electric field at a certain point in the space, right? I hope it's uh, clear. If you have any questions, can you please ask? Right, so Coulomb's law is useful for us to find the uh, electric field at a certain point in the space.
right? So if there are no source charges, then the value of uh, Q, capital Q will be zero, right? If there are no source charges, then capital Q will be um, zero. And then uh, if the capital Q, if I, will, I have mentioned as Q1 here, capital Q1. So if capital Q1, which is the source charge, we will take that it is the source charge. If it is zero, then the electric field will be zero, right? But the electric field relies mostly or mainly on the electric charge. So if the electric charge is uh, zero, then the electric field near that region is also zero, right? So electric charges cause uh, the environment to have an electric field around it, right? I hope it is clear to you, okay? I will erase this part, right? So electric charges, electric charges cause, cause um, electric field to generate electric fields to, to generate around it around it, right? So when we take, for example, positive charge, when we take a positive charge, then electric field is generated in such a way that the electric field lines are going out from the positive electric charge, right? So I think you know this from your advanced level, right? Uh, so all the time, the positive charge will generate uh, like electric field lines from the positive charge and it will go outward from the positive charge, right? So these electric field lines show us the direction of the electric field strength at, at, at these points along these lines, right? So at each point along these lines, if we measure the force, the direction of the force is given by the total, I mean, electric field line, right? So electric field lines in general move away from the positive charge. And uh, if we take negative charges, the uh, electric field lines come into the negative charge, right? So electric field lines come into the negative charge and um, uh, electric field lines go out from uh, positive charges, right? So a negative charges are known as uh, sinks, right? So because the electric field lines come into the negative charge, right? So the neg negative charge is a point where electric field lines come and stop. So uh, because of that, uh, negative charges are known as sinks and positive charges are known as uh, sources, right? Positive charges are known as sources uh, the reason is that uh, positive charges generate electric field lines. They are the starting point of electric field lines. So the electric field lines start from the positive charge and end at negative charges, right? So uh, we can combine that concept and we can draw uh, the, uh, the phenomena of uh, the electric field, uh, electric field that occurs once we keep a positive charge and a negative charge close to each other, right? So once we have uh, the positive charge like this, the positive charge will generate electric field around it in such a way that the electric field force is going outward from the positive charge. And then the, the electric field force will be, uh, will be coming towards the negative charge. So once we uh, draw uh, like in all directions, the electric field lines, then we can draw the electric field lines in, in this kind of a manner. So we can have uh, like electric field lines as, uh, as shown in this diagram. And uh, see these, these electric field lines will always start from the positive and end at the negative, right? So we can have this, uh, distribution occurring in other directions as well in this manner. So if the, um, so the positive charge will be the starting point and the electric field lines are expected to uh, finish at a very far distance. And uh, 
like in that uh, another like uh, for example have the electric field lines coming from infinity up to the negative point a negative charge like this right so the electric field distribution will be according to this um, in the dipole dipole field dipole case right so dipole means situation where we have both the uh, positive and negative charge lying close to each other right so positive charge and negative charge are kept close to each other uh, right so kept close to each other so then we have uh, the electric field distribution in this manner right so we can uh, we can have this kind of a distribution so the field field line or the total field that occurs in that region around this positive and negative charge is known as the dipole field. Right. So basically uh, that is regarding electric fields and the distribution of electric field lines around positive and negative charges. Right. So this is basically regarding just like one positive charge or two positive charge. But what happens if there are multiple charges in the free space or in the space that you consider? Right? There could be multiple charges in the space that you consider. Right? So there could be like negative charge, negative charge particles and positive charge particles in different locations in the space. So what is the total force which is acting on on each of these particles right so in order for us to find that we need to find uh, the uh, uh, find the net uh, for example net uh, electric field at a certain point due to all these charges right so like if we so so what I'm saying is like there could be several charges. If if there, there are several charges in a certain region, there are charges in a certain region. Like this, right? If there are charges in a region like this, right? Uh, then the total electric field that we can observe at a certain point that we consider uh, we can find using uh, the equation uh, I will write that equation right so this is also mathematics but do not be uh, afraid of this this is very easy right so we are trying to find the electric field in this location so in order to find that electric field we are using this equation so uh, this equation is sum m is equal to one up to n and we take the total charge total charge along that region in that region right so r minus r m and r minus this is just equation right so don't uh, like r minus r a m cube Okay, so equation is nothing, right? It's nothing but a, a, like addition of Coulomb's law. Um, Coulomb's law by each of, uh, I mean, considering each of the charges in this area and uh, the effect of each of these charges on this specific point that we consider. That if we consider this specific point A, what is the effect from all these charges on that point A? That is what we are trying to find, right? So we know that there are charges Q1, Q2, likewise, we know, right? There are different charge values, right? Q4, like that, we, we know. Q5, Q6, Q7, like that, we know, right? So 
the net effect of all these charges on this point is what we are trying to find right so uh, the 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 charges and their values will be basically added uh, using the coulomb's law and coulomb force we can define using q over 4 phi epsilon naught into the radius right so the radius value will be defined as the difference between this position and the position of the charge right so we can take like uh, the position of this uh, charge as rm let's say and the position uh, of this uh, point a as r right so we can define that uh, the position of a is r vector and this position of q6 charge as rm vector right so if we define uh, the vectors like that then uh, we know that we can define the distance between these two charges by taking the difference between r vector and rm vector and taking the magnitude of that uh, you know vector right so once we take the magnitude and take the uh, you know like uh, square of it then uh, we we can uh, write the coulomb's law right so uh, we can just we can write the coulomb's law by taking the value of the charge value of the charge if we take uh, q6 uh, for example in this scenario q6 right so we, we need to do for all the charges but for one example we will take only q6 uh, into consideration so q6 uh, r r r vector minus rm vector divide by r we will say we will we'll just name this rm vector as something else because it's not that general right so we can uh, denote this as r not vector r not r not vector right so we can denote that as r not vector then uh, then we can right we can uh, write like this right r vector minus r not vector divide by 4 phi epsilon not this will remain the same for any of these charges which are inside this medium of epsilon naught, right? So let's assume these charges are in this free space. So because of that, the epsilon naught value will be taken as the permittivity value in that area. And uh, we have R minus R naught uh, magnitude into cube, right? Then, then uh, we can actually uh, so this is the definition of the uh, electric field at the point A because of Q, Q charge Q6, right? So the reason that we are having Q, uh, Q B, cube of this uh, R minus R naught is that uh, we, we take not only the distance from that uh, charge towards the point A, but also we are taking the unit vector along the, uh, along the uh, two along the line which is joining these two charges right so the unit vector unit vector along the uh, unit vector along the line which which is along q6 and q q6 and a is r minus r naught vector divided by its magnitude right so when we want to find the unit vector we need to first write the vector and divide it by its magnitude right so the unit vector along q6 and a is this vector so we need uh, we using this unit vector we can define the direction of the force that is acting on this point a because of the charge q6 right so q6 charge we know we know now the direction we need to find the distance. Distance we know uh, that we can define using R vector minus R naught vector, its magnitude squared, right? So based on all that, all those conditions, we can write this force for the, uh, the electric field due to Q6 only, right? Electric field due to Q6 only. Likewise, we can do the same thing for each of the charges in this free space. Right, so based on all of these charges in the free space, we can write the 
force acting on ca uh, capital A, and we can take the sum of all those um, charge fields, I mean forces, forces that are acting because of these charges on the point A, and then uh, we can take the sum of it, right? We can take the sum of all the forces, right? And then that sum will be taken as the electric field at the point A, right? So at point A, we are uh, we are considering that at point A, we are keeping a positive unit test charge, right? So there's no charge at capital A at the moment. We are only finding the electric field at the point A due to this, all these charges, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7, right? So we can just take the sum of the forces uh, that are acting on the point A because of all the rest of the charges in the uh, field or in the area, right? I hope it's clear to you. So that is uh, also very important fact, right? So I will ask one question from you. So if we keep like a positive charge and a negative charge, right? At the sorry, positive charge and a positive charge like this, and we keep like a test charge in here, test charge in here. What is the electric field in this location? What is the electric field in this location due to these positive charges, as you think? What is the force in this location, as you think, if this is positive and this is also positive? Can you let me know? What is the electric field in the midpoint between these positive charges? Uh, these lateral entry students, are you in the meeting or not? It's okay that you don't understand the, the concepts. If, if Even if you do not understand, you can answer these questions. What is the value of electric field in the midpoint between these two charges, the positive charges? Uh, so since there are no answer from you, uh, so the answer should be zero, right? Uh, so the the value of force that acts on the like midpoint between these positive charges, which are of same type, should be zero, right? So because like once uh, we take the forces that are acting from the top charge on this middle, I mean, point, then it will be along this direction bottom, right? Is, it will be directed to the bottom direction. And then once we consider the uh, force acting by the bottom charge on this midpoint, then it will be vertically top, uh, vertically upwards in the uh, vertically upward direction, right? So in that case, like the, the total force which is acting on this test charge will be like zero, right? Because the forces will be cancelled out and the total field total electric field in the midpoint will be zero right right so because of that uh, in this case the total electric field and the midpoint will be zero right so if we take like a more complex scenario than that then we will have some more uh, 
uh, complex computations to do, right? So if we have positive charges along a certain y axis, let's say, and uh, so let's assume that these charges are along the same like axis, right? So we can have them along the y axis. And then uh, based on these charges, right? Based on the uh, charges and their locations, we can find the force that acts on a certain po position in the uh, certain position in the uh, space, right? So we can consider we can consider that we have a horizontal line here and we have uh, like another uh, like a point in here right we have a point in here and then we will also we will consider that the uh, actually this is like difficult for me to draw actually i will um, I will try to draw it, but I think it takes some time. If there's a positive charge like this, and there's a midpoint like this, and there's another like point in here, which is capital A, uh, we can find the total electric field in this point A uh, if we know the charge values of Q and uh, this uh, this charge. So let's assume the charges in the top uh, in the top uh, charge as Q, and the charge at the second point is again Q. The charges are equal, and uh, we will try to co connect these lines, right? I will I will try to connect these lines. Right, so it's uh, It's hard for me to draw. Uh, so let's assume this is a straight line, and uh, we 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 want to find the like uh, we want to find uh, the charge on this point A because of these two charges. Okay, so. Right, so the force on this uh, you know point a because of these charges we can find by uh, taking uh, the consideration of the values of these charges and uh, the effect of these charges on the point a right so um, if we know the length in here if we know the length uh, length of these lines right so if we take the length from the midpoint to the charge as simple L, uh, and the same length is there for the next charge, the bottom charge from the center line. Then uh, we can define the capital simple R, which uh, we can define as uh, the square root of L squared plus another L squared square root, right? So we will we will take that this distance is also L, right? The distance from this. Uh, midpoint, uh, the left end, uh, like intersecting point to the point A, we will take as simple L. So the value of R will be L squared plus L squared square root, right? And uh, so now we know the distance, right? R is known, right? So if we want to find the electric field at the point A, we need to find uh, the total electric field due to the first charge q like q1 let's say like let's say it is q1 and its actual value is q right and this one let's say is q2 and its actual value is q so anyway uh, based because of q1 the force which is acting on the point a 
can be written as q over 4 phi epsilon naught and r squared right so r squared we know in terms of l squared so we can write it like that 4 phi epsilon naught 2 l squared right 2 l squared and we can also define the uh, vector right vector along r uh, towards a so we can just write as r hat right and then we can also write uh, like uh, the other force which is acting on cap uh, i mean point a uh, because of the second charge so we can write ea2 right we ea2 as q over 4 phi epsilon naught r squared so same expression is coming for both the scenarios because the like symmetry is there uh, in the diagram so because of that we can say that ea1 and ea2 are equal to each other in magnitude right in magnitude only right so, however the directions are different right but directions once we take this uh, this uh, force by the q2 will be in this direction while the the force due to q uh, one will be in this direction right so in order for us to find the final direction we need we can uh, we can take the components along the x-axis direction or i hat and then uh, j hat right uh, j hat is the direction or the unit vector along y-axis right if we take the uh, if we take that the charges these the q1 and q2 charges are along the y-axis then uh, the unit vector we can take along the that y axis as j hat right so uh, we can write that uh, the the total electric field at uh, the point a is equal to the uh, sum of the uh, components along the i hat direction and the sum of the components along j hat direction right so since the magnitude are equal magnitudes are equal for the uh, charge for the uh, 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 the magnitudes of the forces by q1 and q2 are equal uh, then uh, once we take the components along the j hat direction then those components will cancel out however the components along the i hat direction will be left right so we need to uh, find the angle that we uh, through which we can find the components along the i hat right so first we need to take the force and we need to take the projection along the i hat direction right so uh, we know we know the magnitude of the uh, electric field at that point we need to take the cos theta value along the i hat direction and we need to then uh, take uh, the next one ea2 ea2 and take its magnitude and take its component along the i hat direction right so likewise we have to take the components along the i hat direction and we know that the components along the j hat direction will cancel out because the magnitude of the force acting on a because of q1 and q2 are equal and opposite right so we can take zero j hat right so cos theta now it's something that we don't know like cos theta we can define as l over l over 2 l squared uh, square root right so that we can also write as 1 over square root 2 l right so we can substitute this expression in this ea1 ea um, ea expression right so ea a field we can write uh, we can write like uh, using the values of uh, uh, q uh, q right it's q 4 phi epsilon naught then r squared we know as 2 l squared and then we know cos theta is uh, like square root 2 l uh, and we can take the twice of this because uh, we have the magnitudes of ea1 equal to ea2 right so we can like cancel out the twos in here then finally we are left over with uh, we are left over with uh, 
uh, right so if we uh, yeah so um yeah so in this case we are not having l in here because we are cancelling out the l uh, in in the numerator and denominator when when we take the cos theta so the l is not here okay so one another thing is that uh, uh, so we are left over with Uh, two into cos theta into uh, so cos theta I have actually written it wrong. I have to write it again. Uh, cos theta I have defined as one over uh, one over square root two, right? So um, I will write it one over one over square root two. right 1 over square root 2 into 2 right because we are taking the same uh, expression two times because the magnitude of ea1 and ea2 are equal so because of that we are actually adding the same expression two times so the two of both the numerator and denominator gets cancelled and we are left over with q over 4 phi epsilon naught and uh, like square root 2 and L squared, right? So this is the expression that we are left over with. We can make it beautiful by taking the square root uh, into here. And we can write 4 square root 2 into epsilon naught into L squared, right? I hope it is clear to you. So uh, in, in this way, we can take the magnitude of electric field at a certain point in the space due to other charges in the uh, space, right? So we, uh, we uh, took the components of the force acting on the point A due to these charges. And then we, to we took the sum of those components along the I hat direction and the J hat direction. So uh, we can divide uh, the force components along I hat direction and the J hat direction. And then we can add those things separately. So, so due to the easy, I mean, in, in this sum, it was easy to find the final value uh, because the force acting on the point A because of the charges was equal uh, magnitude wise because the value of the charge source charges Q1 and Q2 are equal. And also the distance from those charges to this point is equal, capital simple R, right? So I hope it, it is clear to you, right? Another thing that we need to like know is that we uh, need to, uh, we need to uh, next talk about the uh, electric, uh, electric flux lines right so electric flux and its meaning so that we can actually start uh, talking about the uh, uh, gaussian law in the next class right so that we can actually talk about the gaussian law and then we can with that we can actually uh, start talking about the maxwell's law right so uh, so in order for us to do that we need to first define what the electric flux is and um, how we can um, how we can uh, use uh, how we can use those electric flux to define uh, the electric field at a certain point in the space and uh, how uh, what are the relationships between the electric field and the electric flux right so electric flux is something that we uh, re we need to know uh, in, uh, so it is an important parameter. So electric flux electric flux refers to the total the total number of electric flux 
total number of electric field lines right electric flux refers to the total number of electric field lines passing through a given surface right so um, in electric uh, in in physics right we are we are uh, drawing these electric field lines which are which are caused due to source charges and these electric field lines right electric field lines can be like can be quantified we can count the number of electric field lines along a certain unit area so right so we can uh, we can consider a certain volume right volume of like closed surface then we can count the amount of electric field lines that are going through that surface right so electric flux refers to the total number of electric field lines which are passing through a given surface right so if we are given a certain surface right surface so that let's let's assume this is a closed surface therefore there are some volume inside this right uh, however like if we take the outer surface of that volume if and if we keep some electric charges inside that volume we can observe that electric field lines are going outward from that source charge out of the surface right so the amount of electric flux lines the total number of electric flux lines uh, electric field lines like uh, give the electric flux right so electric flux refer to the total number of electric field lines that are passing through a given surface right so uh, the electric flux actually represent the electric field lines right so electric field lines represent the electric field strength in that uh, location in the space right so electric field lines lines represent the direction of the uh, direction of the electric force electric field the direction of the electric field strength right direction of the electric field uh, strength in that certain like in a certain point right so uh, so direction of the electric field is given by the direction of the electric field lines right at a certain point uh, so uh, the the amount of electric field lines that are crossing a certain surface is defined as the electric flux so uh, we can actually i mean this is like a definition which says that like once you are uh, once you are having a certain source inside a certain closed surface there could be some electric field lines that are generated due to that specific uh, uh, charges right amount of charges like let's say there are like two co coulombs of charges inside this closed volume and if we take another scenario where we have four coulombs four coulombs of charges inside a closed volume then the amount of flux that is moving out from this volume is twice the value that we had earlier right so we can actually have twice the amount of electric flux occurring due to the amount of charge which is kept inside the closed volume at a certain time right so if we increase the amount of like charges inside a certain volume then we can have increased amount of flux that is coming out from that uh, like charge right and out of that closed volume right so based on the source charges amount of source charges that are available the amount of electric flux that are generated from that charge also varies if we increase the amount of charges inside the closed volume then the amount of flux that is generating uh, is also increasing right uh, so in order for us to find the electric flux we need to use this equation so we need to uh, take the dot product between the electric field and the area vector uh, which is defined for the uh, surface right so area vector right is defined as the area 
vector which uh, defines the area uh, which is uh, the vector which is perpendicular to the area of the surface right so the, the this capital a vector is the vector which is perpendicular to the area to the surface of the perpendicular to the surface of the volume or the object right so the vector which is perpendicular to the surface is uh, is defined as the area vector right okay so however we can actually simplify this further right we can take the sum of the electric field at each point in the in the in the surface and take the uh, take the dot product with the area vector at each point in the surface right so once we do that the total electric flux which is going outward from uh, from a certain uh, from a certain surface is calculated right the total amount of electric flux that is going out from a surface is calculated right okay so with that uh, i think electric flux uh, definition is complete so we can actually consider a certain example right if, uh, if you have any questions please let me know So we will consider a small example here. We have, have uh, three charges inside a closed volume, right? We have uh, three objects which, which have certain charges, right? object one, object two, and object three, right? So these objects are certain in certain regions of the closed surface. So this, uh, this closed surface is the biggest closed surface, right? So this closed surface includes all these three objects, O1, O2, and O3, right? Uh, so this closed surface, the biggest closed surface has an area of A1, the smallest closed surface that is inside the closed surface, another, I mean, there's another closed surface inside this A1, which we can call as A2, right? And then we have another surface, which which is in between the closed surface A1 and A2, which we can call as A3, right? So inside A3, there are no objects and there are no charges, right? So in that case, like uh, the question is, like if there's charge of five microcoulombs on top of O1 and like minus six microcoulombs on top of O2 and zero charges on top of O3, object and what is the total flux through the surfaces a1 a2 and a3 right so what is the flux what is the flux through a1 what is the flux through a1 a2 and a3 So A1, the total flux through A1 can be found by taking the total charge, which is enclosed in this closed surface, right? So actually this is based on the Gaussian law of electric field, right? So, uh, in, so we can easily find the total flux across the closed surface A1 by taking the sum of the charges, which is the sum of the charges on O1, O2 and O3. So the total charge inside the closed surface is five minus six microcoulomb, right? And then we can uh, divide this by epsilon naught. Then uh, we will get minus one microcoulomb divided by epsilon naught. So this is the flux across A1 uh, surface. And the flux across A2 surface is the minus six microcoulomb divided by epsilon naught. And then uh, the flux across A3 is zero, right? Because uh, 
because uh, sorry the flux across a2 is what it's actually zero right uh, the flux means the total number of electric field lines going out from the object so so the like charge inside the a2 surface is minus right so minus my minus 6 microcoulomb will not give out any flux out of the object right because of that actually out of a1 also the total flux is zero the total the flux is zero because the um, amount of flux going out is zero and the amount of flux going out from um, sorry uh, the amount of flux going out from the uh, the surface a a2 a2 is equal to the amount of charge inside a2 so uh, inside a2 we have we have uh, o3 right sorry actually i think i made a mistake right in here um right so uh, actually what we were doing was correct so the total i mean total flux going out is minus in this case okay so although there's uh, no flux going out like in a positive manner the amount of flux going out is minus one micro coulomb divided by epsilon naught minus one means it is coming inside the object right anyhow there's a value for the electric flux in this case right so at least flux is coming inside so there's value for the flux so this is not zero this is a positive negative value flux is coming into the surface flux is coming into the surface right so coming into uh, a1 surface right a2 once we take the flux across a2 uh, then uh, we can find the a2 is having object number three so object number three is having zero charges right so therefore zero divided by epsilon naught gives us zero right so zero flux coming out of a2 surface then we have the uh, a3 surface where we have no charges inside the a3 object right so there are no charges then zero divided by epsilon naught so again uh, the total flux coming out of a3 surface will be zero likewise we can find the total flux which is coming out from certain surface using uh, this um, using the gaussian law so we will be actually learning that in the uh, in the next few steps of this lecture so i think i explained gaussian law before uh, teaching it however if you want to find the total flux across a certain surface we need to find the total charge which is enclosed in that surface and then we need to divide it by epsilon naught which is the uh, free space permittivity value and then we can find the flux value by taking the ratio between the amount of charge and the epsilon naught right so uh, basically uh, uh, that is about electric flux right now next we have the second definition which is electric flux density electric flux density right electric flux density is defined as the strength of the electric field per unit area right so it is defined as the strength of the electric field per unit area right so uh, that means like electric flux per unit area right we are going to measure the amount of electric field lines per unit area so uh, therefore like it is different from the electric flux so electric flux was about how much of electric flux i mean electric field lines are going out from a certain closed surface right but electric flux density is like how much of electric flux coming out per certain unit area per unit area some kind of a unit area we will have right how much of electric field lines that are coming per unit area right so we have a certain specific area that we are considering right 
So per unit area, how much of electric field lines are coming out is what we are considering in here, right? So that is defined as the electric flux density. Electric flux density is also defined in terms of electric field. So electric flux density is also denoted by uh, uh, actually the symbol D and that D is related to the electric field in terms of epsilon naught in this manner. Right. So if electric field and the electric flux density are both vectors and therefore we need to add the vector sign on electric field and the electric flux density. Uh, okay, so another thing is the SI units of the electric flux. Uh, e electric flux density is coulombs per meter squared. Right, so that is basically regarding electric flux density. Okay, so so electric flux is uh, electric flux electric flux density we uh, covered in the in this class. So electric flux is uh, an amount, right? An amount of electric field lines across a closed surface. Therefore, it is defined as a scalar, and electric flux density is defined as a vector. Right, so it is defined as a vector, and therefore uh, we need to know those concepts, and we need to verify how uh, how we can consider like electric flux and electric flux density. What are their definitions? Right, so we need to know those definitions. We need to know whether they are scalar or vector. Right. So it's important to know that, right? So in the in the next class, we'll be talking about the Gaussian law based on the on these concepts that we covered in this class. So in the next class, we'll be talking about the Gauss's law. Right. So in today's class, we, I will uh, like summarize what we discussed. So in today's class, we discussed mainly about the electric electric field. Right at a certain point in the space, uh, at a point in space, due to like source charges, right? So we did that using Coulomb's law, right? Coulomb's law. We used Coulomb's law to find the electric field at a certain point in the space, and then also we learned how to find the total electric field at a certain point due to multiple electric charges. Right, the total electric field at a certain point due to multiple electric charges. Right, total electric field at a point due to multiple electric charges. Okay, so due to multiple electric charges. Right. There could be uh, multiple electric charges in the space, uh, and uh, in that situation, how to find the uh, electric field at a certain point in the space is what we uh, discussed. After that, we discussed a little bit about uh, the uh, uh, the uh, electric field and how it is defined, right? How we can define the electric field at a certain point? Yeah, we define, we we discuss that, and then we uh, discussed about the electric flux. Right? We discussed about electric flux, and we discussed about electric flux density. Right? So, electric flux, electric flux density, we discussed. Right, and then we uh, also made a small sample uh, questions regarding electric flux. So electric flux, electric flux density, we learned. So uh, those concepts are very equal, important for us. So electric field strength, electric flux, electric flux density, those are important factors that we need to keep in our mind in this class, right? Electric flux is given normally using this phi symbol, and then we can give uh, electric field strength using E symbol, and then we can give the electric flux density uh, value by using D symbol, right? So we can use these parameters mainly to define an electric field at a certain point in space. Right, I hope it was somewhat clear to you. If you have any questions, please ask. I will stop the recording.